is also a 1966 uh, convertible Mustang. We'll take a look and see exactly what it is. It does say it was an A-code car um, on the tag inside. It says that it has been sold. We're early on Friday, so it must have been a pretty decent price. I can tell that it does have the GT option on and it's got the fog lights here. We'll see what the door says. So yeah, it does, it does say that it was an A-code Mustang. The window's down over there. We'll go over and check out that side. I did speak with the owner. He said that this actually does have a, a K-code high-performance motor in it as well. Now this one, of course, has the pony interior. Uh, we can see on the inside, it does look pretty much all original, unrestored. And just the motor may have been replaced four speed, been off the road for 20 years, power steering, power top, AC, pretty loaded out car. It's pretty cool is it's probably the original top on this car. Uh, what's also cool is this one still has the GT uh, gas cap on the back. And then also this one has the, the dual exhaust flutes in the back that come to the lower valance. So really, really cool car. The owner did say that he sold this car for about $28,000. Um, if you guys think that that's a pretty good deal, uh, just let us know in the comment section below. This car behind me is an F-code car, which would have been a 302 Mustang Fastback. Nothing, nothing too crazy, nothing too special, but normally when you find these cars, they're completely rusted out. Now, the only rust that really I see on this car is right here where the battery tray would have been, which uh, isn't, isn't too big of a deal. They haven't even cut the holes um, in the shock towers, like most of them have been to, to actually re-grease those. The owner's asking, 13.5 for this car. We'll get a better view of it here in just a moment. That's what you want to see under here. This un underneath here looks pretty, pretty sanitary. It's actually getting better uh, the further lower we go here. You know, you can take quarters on and off these cars. I don't really think that the rust on there is too, too difficult. See if it's got a, any sort of nine inch rear end. Probably not because it wasn't anything but just a sports roof car. No, it's just got the the eight inch rear end underneath there. So that's going to hurt the value a little bit. Overall, the owner's asking 13.5 for this car. Do I think that's a fair price or not? Well, it's not a 67 and it's not a 68. And these cars I've sold in this condition for around nine to $10,000. Now they did have a motor in them and seats, a little bit more interior, but structurally wise, this car underneath is a lot more solid than the cars that I've sold. I would price this car about 95 to $10,000. And if you agree with that, let us know in the comments below. We're making our way down the first aisle here. And what I wanted to show you guys are these Shelby pieces right here now they're not actually real Shelby pieces these are reproduction Tony Branda stuff but the reason I want to show you is that on real Shelby cars the fiberglass is actually smooth on the back end and on all the reproduction pieces the fiberglass is not smooth um, so I don't know if you can see that on camera there but just something different that uh, not a lot of people know about Shelby cars uh, the fiberglass is different on the aftermarket parts we'll see exactly what this car is They're asking $39,000 for it. It's a 289 two barrel C code car. Um, let's see what else. This is, of course, the Marty report. Kind of gives us all the information on the car. Air conditioning, tilt steering wheel, power steering, power brakes, uh, tinted glass, deluxe seat belts, uh, wire wheel covers. Does it still got the wire wheel covers on it? No. But damn, $39,000, we got a lot of damage back in here. These cars have just skyrocketed in value. I mean, any Mustang Fastback, other than like the 69, 70s that we just took a look at, they're one of the hottest cars in the market. And this car doesn't seem too, too bad. I remember, I remember buying cars in this condition like, you know, five, 10 years ago for around $4,500, $5,000. So definitely, Definitely something if you have a, a 68, 67 Fastback at home, um, you're definitely sitting on something that's pretty valuable and, and it continues to go up in value. So another car that uh, is actually, I, I would say that they are coming down in value a little bit. I mean, I'm starting to see these cars. This is a, a 57 Thunderbird. Um, you, you're able to find a pretty decent car for, for under the $15,000 mark if you really look hard enough. This car behind me though is, is actually restored very, very well. Of course, it's dressed in black. It does have uh, the original 312 in here. So what's cool about T-Birds is that uh, they made these baby birds in three different gears, 55, 56, and 57. And they're actually different on the tail end each year. So 55 has the shortest fins on it. 
uh, 56 actually has medium sized fins and got the Continental kit. And then 57 has the, the biggest fins on it, just, just like this one. Now you could have got two tops with them. I don't know if this one has the hard top or not. Um, but we can see that the owner's asking uh, 34.9, or if you were to pay in cash today, it'd be 32.5. We got the owner's phone number here for us. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and give them a call. But overall, this this is a, a fairly uh, well uh, restored Thunderbird compared to the most of the times that I see them whenever you see them on like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, and that's why the cost reflects that. So right here we have two Shelby Mustangs. Uh, this first one is actually a 1968 Shelby GT500 KR car. It does have the, the Lucas lights down here. The early cars would have had Marshall headlights, so we know that this isn't that early. Of course, it does have the air induction system here for the, the GT500 KR option. Just the 500s had the ductwork here underneath the hood. Uh, we also have the correct Cobra Le Mans valve covers here for the GT500. The big block cars on Mustangs also got these pieces right here as well as the six cylinder cars. And this car does have the original buck tag with it. Um, however, it's actually kind of ripped in half. We can kind of take a look and see what options this car had originally. And we can see that it had power brakes, power steering, dual exhaust. And we do see an SA, so it was a Shelby American car. This car does have the original uh, hubcaps that would have came on the car from the factory. However, there are 10 spoke wheels over there that probably were on this car for the majority of its life. We do see that it does have an R um, actually in the VIN number right here. And that would confirm that it is a, a KR car for us inside the actual cockpit of the car. Now remember that in 67, everything in there was pretty much stainless steel, uh, but in 68, Shelby wanted to basically make this a more luxurious car. So everything's wood, of course, on the inside. We do have the roll bar here with the actual um, clamps so that you could actually take skis or um, put anything up there and then strap it down. Even the, the, even the actual fastback versions of these have these on here also. It does, of course, have the dual exhaust uh, with the flutes on it. It has the sequential taillights on it. Um, overall, just a really, really, really cool car. Behind me is an actual 66 Shelby GT uh, 350 Hertz cars. Again, we can tell, of course, it's a 66. It does have the, the glass in the side here, of course. These came with a, a 289 um, K-Code high performance motor. We'll take a look at that here in just a moment. And these motors had about 271 horsepower new from the factory. But what's cool about these cars is they only made about 1,300 of them. First couple were actually white, um, but you could get this car in, in a couple different colors. You can get them in black and gold, you can get them in blue, you can get them in red also. But really, really, really cool Shelby GT350 Hertz car. We'll go around and take a look at the side one more time. Let's see if we can get in here. Uh, they are for sale. It does say, I think it says $187.5,000 if you want to show that there um, on, on the window. Very, very nice quality car. Uh, it is an automatic. Not, you know, I would rather have a four speed. We can see the Shelby tack in there. It was signed by Carol Shelby. Overall, very, very sanitary car, cool car. I just love black cars, gold stripes. Can't go wrong with a Shelby GT350 Hertz edition. So we have a, a set of Shelby 10 spokes here. Uh, they're asking $2,500 for those. Have a good one. As well as these look like uh, the 69, uh, re I guess they're reproduction uh, wheels, 525 bucks, doesn't seem too bad. This is a, a 1967 Ford Fairlane. Now, this is a, a Fairlane 500. The owner does have GT wheel covers on this car, but this is not a GT car. If this was a GT car, if it was a GT car, it would actually have the GT stripe very similar to a Mustang that would have went down the side of this car, not, not this chrome piece. Now, other than that, I mean, it's a very, very sanitary car. The owner's asking, uh, $17,995 for this car. If you take a step back, it, last time it was inspected was uh, 15, so it probably hasn't ridden in a while. 
Um, but overall, very, very, the paint's nice on it. Looks like everything for the 289 in here is correct. It doesn't look like it's been kind of messed around with. It all looks like it came with the car originally and just been taken care of over time. I don't think that this is a bad price for this car. The interior is very nice. It doesn't have buckets, of course. If it was a GT, it would have probably had buckets. Uh, bench seat on the column car. Interior, overall, no rips, no tears, very, very sanitary. I wonder how many miles are on this car. Let me see if I can find that out. It doesn't, there can't be that many. It says 32,000 miles in there. I'm not sure, like I said, if that's 132 or 32,000 miles, but for the the quality of this car, it was either painted about 20 years ago or it was just well taken care of its whole life. So in one of the last Carlisle videos that I did, I talked about the Ford Mustang and the vents for 65 and 60, 66 cars. Now this is exactly what I was talking about. So these pieces are made out of pot metal and they do actually reproduce these pieces, but not, not in pot metal. And what I meant by, you know, them bringing a pretty decent amount of money is you can see that for $1,000, you can actually get the set of both of these just for these pieces to fit in your car. Now, a few years ago, they were a lot less than that. You normally paid about $300 um, a piece for them. But I mean, this one has all of the metal brackets in there, all of the mesh. It has all of the everything on here. So $1,000 doesn't seem like a bad price to have the original parts on your Mustang. Now what's cool about 78 is that if you had the custom trim level, which is the lowest trim level possible, then you actually got these round headlights in here. If this was like an XLT or something like that, they would have actually been square. Now in 78, it also would have had Ford on the front here. Uh, this one does not say that. Um, it also didn't have any of the drip rail moldings because it's a custom, but overall very, very well presented. Short bed, 78 truck, six cylinder, can't really go long. You can see he's got the, the seats in the back here. Let's take a look inside. It's got the 85 mile an hour dash in it. The seats don't look too hateful in it. No carpet or anything like that, just the base level truck. Here's a, a shaker setup for a, a 7428 Cobra Jet car. They're offering uh, this at $2,500. Same for the, uh, the 69 428 shaker setups, $2,500. Let's see what else they got. They got Boss Mustang through uh, 302 exhaust manifolds over there. There's no price over there, I already checked. These are uh, 68 and a half 428 Cobra Jet heads. Um, they have the codes on them here and they have those listed here for $2,500. So it looks like everything actually on this table's Cobra Jet. Again, we have more Mustangs here, and this behind me is a 1966 convertible. Uh, now, this originally is a six-cylinder car. However, it does, of course, you can add those, but those were on the Mach 1s. Of course, in 69, it also got the, the white, the white, or the red uh, insert here on the seats. We know it's a 69, of course, by the scoops in the side. It does have the louvers and the actual spoiler as well. The owner's asking, $65,000 for this car. They do have a Marty report over here that says that, yes, it originally was ordered with uh, the 428 four barrel um, R code, which is also right here on the actual uh, VIN number. Definitely needs completely restored. Um, $65,000 for this car is about probably what it's worth when it's restored, 65 to around $75,000. Uh, this car definitely, definitely needs more work. It wasn't an AC car, I guess, but they might have added it. Maybe that's what that's for. Um, but overall, in general, if you're looking for a Mach 1 428 R-Code car, uh, this is probably not the one that you would want to start out with. You'd probably want to start out with one that's a little bit cheaper that you could probably end the restoration in about where the cars are worth when they're done. But if you buy this one for 65, in my opinion, uh, you're spending just a little bit too much. This is a, a 1970 Boss 302 Mustang, and this one's in Grabber Orange. And the way that we know that this is a, a Boss Mustang originally is because it does have the G code on the actual VIN number itself. Now these were built to homologate for the Trans Am series. It does have the shaker hood, which is an option. You don't have to have the shaker hoods on these cars, but they made about 290 horsepower when new. We can take a look on the inside. Of course, it's a four speed. 
but overall that owner's asking about seventy thousand dollars for this car that's a uh, pretty much the 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 actual number that these cars are worth in other words if you were to try and sell this car at a big time auction or something like that around seventy thousand dollars is about exactly what it would bring we're going to take a look at the 1965 ford shelby gt350 uh, now this car is not a real GT350 that's uh, sitting out here in the lawn with the rest of us. This is uh, an, actually a clone car and we can see that the owner is asking about $85,000 or best offer. Now the prices on clone cars kind of depends on how well the clone is done. And, this one's done fairly well. Um, it doesn't have like the blue dot tires on it, but everything else on this car is pretty much correct. It has the right dash in there. It's got the right gauges. Um, it has the right uh, console. It even has the spare tire that came in the back and it has the correct piece in the actual trunk for the spare tire. Overall, it's a very, very, very well done uh, GT350 clone. Uh, better than most of the clones that I've seen. I've seen clones sell it from anywhere from about 60 to 80,000, so I don't think that this one is out of line. Um, but overall, just a nice car. If you wanted a real one of these cars, you're going to be spending around anywhere from two to $250,000. So $89,000 for a white with blue striped car. You know, you can't go wrong with that. So these next couple cars, I'm not a 100% familiar with. I've never actually owned a Torino Cobra before, and this is a, a 1970 Torino Cobra 429 car. And we'll show you that we have the Marty report here. Of course, it's a 70. Uh, this car had uh, air conditioning, power steering, front brakes, console. This car pretty much was loaded uh, from the factory completely. The owner right here is asking uh, 47.9 for the car. Four speed, we can go ahead and, it, it is a four speed car, yeah. Yeah, really, really cool Torino Cobra 429 four barrel car. Uh, I like the blue, if you like the blue, just uh, let us know in the comments below. But I believe the same owner also has this car behind us, and this is a 1966 Comet Cyclone GT. Now they made a Comet Caliente, they made a Cyclone. The Cyclone was the race version and we know it's the race version because of course it has the 390 big block in here. Uh, we also have the Cyclone GT on the valve covers. It does have a, a four speed in it. I prefer the 64 cars with the sideways headlights. Of course 65, 66 has the stacked headlights like this. Um, I think the, the 64s are a little bit cooler car in my opinion, but there's nothing wrong with this car at all. Um, it does have uh, the black interior. The owner is also asking, I believe it's the same one as the car behind us, 46,000 cash. You see here it's got dual exhaust on it. It's got the console in here. We have the, the tack as well, probably the, the site that says Cyclone on there. So probably part of the Cyclone package. Um, but just a car you don't really see that often. This is a, a 1967 Ford Fairlane. I believe it's a, a GT car, or at least it's dressed as a GT car. In the 1967, you could get several different motor options in a GT car. They originally started out as a 289 car. However, this car has a H code in it, which is a, a three, uh, 390 automatic. Like I said, I'm not 100% if this is a, an original GT car or not, but if it was, uh, it would have had disc brakes from the factory, of course, uh, dual exhaust from the factory. It would have had the nine inch uh, Ford rear end. Now this does have the, the 427 insert on the hood here, and it does have the 427 valve covers, of course, but they only made 230 427 big block 67 Fairlanes in 1967 and the cool thing is is if this was one of those cars it would actually have holes cut in the fender on the inner fender well so that you can change the spark plugs unfortunately this one does not because it wasn't born with the 427 but I'm going to see how much this car is worth let me see here of course if it was a automatic car it was a GTA and it got the stripe down here remember on the other car we looked at earlier the GT um, the Fairlane it was the 500 and it had the, the actual chrome striping that went down the side. This one does not. The price for this car is uh, $52,500, probably reflective of the engine that has in it, although not original to the car. But overall, bench seat. Yep, you want to get a awesome, awesome. If you want to get a shot of the inside here, we just have a, a bench seat, pretty plain Jane interior. 
if it was a GT car, it would have had lights that were actually on the on the door. But overall, very fairly cool Fairlane. The first Cougar that we've been able to find, and this is a 1969 Cougar Eliminator, and it does have the the 351 Windsor four barrel in there. And I personally think 69s are probably the best year for these cars. What's really cool is that this is orange and that that's probably one of the rarest colors for the Eliminator, for the Cougars. The owner's asking $75,000 for this car, his number's right here. Um, I'm not sure if that's a pretty good number for these cars or not. I'm not up to date on the Cougars like I am the Mustangs, but this car is very, very well restored. Um, it looks like everything is pretty much brand new or has been replaced very very well presented probably the nicest cougar eliminator that that i've seen we see you can adjust the the rear wing here that's pretty cool but the car next to it's actually a 65 mustang and of course it's a fastback i'm not sure it says originally four speed car uh, the owner's asking fifty four thousand dollars for it his phone number's right there um, it does look like it originally was we'll see here It looks like a C, so it would have been a 289 two-barrel car. The prices on these Mustang Fastbacks, if this was a, a GT car, the last couple that have sold GT cars were actually 55,000, around that area. The 289 cars like this one, the last couple that I've seen sold were around the $45,000 mark. Uh, the owner has on there, it says do not open or do not touch, so I'm not actually able, able to actually kind of dive into this car for you. But I do know that uh, white cars with uh, red stripes were pretty rare in 1969. Uh, this car is, is an original automatic car and uh, it is an original Mach 1 and I can tell you that because it has the clock in the dash which you're probably not going to be able to see. It also has the red stripe in the, in the, the seat um, but the floor mats on this car are actually red or orange down there at the bottom and that was Mach 1 specific. Yeah, I'm not, oh, it was PA. I'm trying to figure out where it was from, but this one originally was from Pennsylvania, of course. Damn, I'm an idiot. Um, but these cars don't, don't look too hateful. They look rather complete. I don't know if they have an engine in them. It looks like it might. Probably has the, the 351 Windsor um, in this car. The time that it was uh, driven around was uh, in 1995. The same owner has this car too. Like I said, this one also has this, a statement on it that says, do not touch. Um, but we can see that this was also an automatic car. Pretty much the same condition. I mean, they're very, very, very similar cars. Um, they didn't have the shaker hood. You can see the turn signals in here. Overall, the H code car uh, should be a 351 car from the factory. But he's asking seven or 16K for that one over there and 16k for this one over here no they're not a 67 or a 68 otherwise they'd be twice that much but uh, they do look like pretty good cars to start out with i mean the the metal on these cars down here doesn't look too too hateful um, but we'll go ahead and get you the guy's actual phone number here for you guys you can give him a call this car behind me is pretty cool. This is a 1969 R-Code Mustang. And what that means, of course, is it does have the 428 uh, Cobra Jet down in the front here. Uh, it does have the rare mare uh, shaker hood on it as well. Now, this is said to be an original California car, so we'll see if it has the California plates on the back. But the owner's asking $75,000 for it. And if you compare it to the 69, we took a look outside that they were asking $65,000 for. I think that this one is just a much, much nicer vehicle. Not really familiar with this color, uh, but it does have black interior. It is an automatic car. It does say that it was been stored the last 30 years, doesn't have any rust on it. It doesn't look like it has any rust on it at all, but uh, it does have the California black plates on it, which means that it wasn't registered anywhere but California. Overall, very, very, very nice car. One of the nicest Mustang fastbacks at this show. What we're going to do is take a look at some different Celine Mustangs, and we'll start with the 85 version, the four-eyed version. Now, Celine started really in 84. They made three cars, but in 85 is really whenever start, things started to take off. So this is a, a 1985 Celine. 
And basically for the 85 model, what happened was is they got a different aero kit on the outside. As you can see that these headlights are flush. The aero kit down the side is a little bit different in the back as well. And they also got wider tires in 1985 than the 84 cars. Now this car in front of you is uh, one of eight um, with white and tan interior. Um, it does have the, the solid blue stripe down the side that's been confirmed by Celine to have come from the factory like that. It also has the 5.0 engine in it with the T5 trans, but this is kind of like the origin story or, or, or basically the, the, the starting point for, for Celine Mustang, 1985. This one's actually a very, very special Celine. This is a 19, 1991 Celine SC. The plaque down here says that they only made about nine, uh, which still, either way, is, makes this a very, very, very rare Celine. It's the first Celine ever made in this Calypso color. Uh, we can see that it was signed by Steve Celine right there on the front fan. And this car also came with a radar detector from the factory as well as the roll bar. We can kind of get a better look at it from the side here. Overall, very, very, very rare, rare Celine Mustang. So moving on here, we're going to talk about some mid SN95 uh, 90s Mustangs. And the one behind us is actually a 95. And that one is uh, an S3. Here, let's see what let's take a look at it for a second an s 351 r now this means that it had the the 351 windsor motor in it of course and it also had a pro charger by vortec you can see the vortec logo right here uh, but in 96 they also had a, an s 281 now these had a totally different motor in them the 4.6 liters and were based on the gt but this car behind us is is pretty special because this one was actually a drug dealer's car or the person that, that had this car that bought it originally was under surveillance by the united states government and when they tried to cross over in mexico was found with a whole bunch of money and drugs on them they actually used this car as an undercover surveillance car after they seized it. You know, it had a radio in it, it had the, the lights on, it actually was used in police duty. We can see where this car was actually seized. They have the people's faces blocked out. It was seized in December 96 and it only had uh, 1,800 miles on this car. Uh, I think that that's pretty cool. It was car number 259. Uh, we'll go ahead and flip over here some more. Of course, they had a Camaro IROC as well. You can see with the police helicopter. Just a, just a cool story in general with the car down there having the radar detector in it. This car had uh, a bunch of different type of detection system for the, the opposite side of the wall. Pretty cool Celine story. So I'm not too familiar with like uh, Celine Mustangs from like 1999 and onward. So I found this gentleman, his name's Evan, and he's been gracious enough to kind of give us a tour or give us some information on these 2000 Celine cars. And Evan, what can you what can you tell us about these cars? This one behind you actually yep. is, is your car, is that right? Yep, yep. So this one's mine. It's a 2003 black uh, Celine New Edge, uh, bumper number 284 coupe clearly and for for those at home what are these bumper numbers those is, yeah, yeah yeah so basically just like an assembly line within the Celine facility these would just be the build numbers of the car it has nothing to do with the vin the vin of these cars is actually just mustang gts all new edge Celine or just Celine mustangs in general start their lives as mustang gts and um you know they get shipped over to the Celine facility in corona california and they build them up you know throw all the body panel parts on them, um, all the suspension related pieces. And you know, if you optioned a supercharger, the supercharger as well, so. What can you tell us about this car? Uh, what I can tell you is that it is uh, from the year 2003. Um, 2003 specifically was the lowest production year for Celine Mustangs between 99 and 2004. So one of the rarest years of uh, Celine New Edges, um, the differences between the years, uh, it's, it's quite minimal, but if you're a Celine enthusiast, you'd be able to tell yeah, one example. Uh, would be the spoiler. Um, if you look at a lot of other Celine New Edges, they're not going to have the three-piece spoiler. This only came between 2002 and 2003. This piece right here. Yes, and that's a very distinct feature on those. 2002-2003 came with that, whereas, um, to say, for example, 2004 uh, would, ha would feature this spoil uh, wing, which was not attached to the car. This car was featured in Too Fast, Too Furious? Correct, correct. It was at Nick over there, he knows way more about it than I do, but um, it's one of the movie cars from the movie. Not the one they crushed, obviously, that was a, that was a clone. Sure. Another thing is in 2002, 2000, between 2000 and 2004, you've got the Celine seats. Uh, so you've got the much nicer interior 
Oh, um, they were specific. The yes, Selene. the Selene's uh, before that, they were basically just GT seats and um, not a whole lot special, or you could option the seats, but all the Selene's between those years came standard. This one in particular um, came with the, it's an S281 SC, and the SC stands for supercharged, and you'll have all the specs and whatnot from the window sticker. This is not the original window sticker, but it's a, it's a replication of one, uh, you know, just a copy of one, but uh, it gives you an idea for that exact model. Now, who signed it right here? Is that Steve? So that, yeah, that's Steve Celine's signature. I got it in the dash. Uh, that was from Mustang Week. And then I met him up at the Celine National Show in Ocala of just a, just a couple days later and got his signature in the engine bay. And Steve's here on campus. I Steve is here, yes. Yeah, so pay another visit to him. And I'm moving out west, so I'll actually run into him at the Celine uh, National Show in oh, you California. Don't no, no. So the original owner actually um, sold it to me without him because he loved the look of it. And he always drove it throughout the, you know, when it was sunny and not through the rain. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to keep doing that. And so in honor of him, you know, I keep him <laughs> off and it looks, it looks a lot better to me. I love the, I love the look of it. Here's the engine bay. So as you can see, we got a good old supercharger on there. Um, engine specs, if you're not familiar with uh, two valves, GTs, God, this is hot. Um, it's a 4.6, sorry, yeah, 4.6 two valve, 281 cubic inches. That's where the model uh, Celine number comes from. So it'd be a 281 SC. Say that one more time, I didn't catch that. Yeah, yeah, so the cubic inches of the engine is a 281 cubic inches. So and that's where the S281 And that's where the S281 comes okay, from, exactly. And the SC after that is just the supercharged variant. Okay. This one has a Celine Series 4 supercharger which is actually a twin screw, not a root style supercharger. The differences between a roots and a twin screw, um, the twin screws were a lot more advanced at the time and um, they made more power than the roots uh, style superchargers did. They came on the Terminators. This is just extremely hot. So why don't, so I'm gonna, <laughs> why don't we take a down. walk down this road yeah. here and you just kind of tell us. Sure. What, when you look at this car, what, what stands out? I know it's the two fast. Well, car, I, I, guy, I mean, what are you looking at when you see this stuff? Yeah, I mean, the first thing that jumps out at me is definitely the color. The color is, it's, it's basically really only came on these. This is in list stick red. So if you actually read the description, um, it was originally Speed Lab Leo as you read that, but a list stick red was an extremely uh, rare color on Celine New Edges. So that's what stands out to me. 